Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, unlock Henderson. This is a procedural report to approve the disposal of the properties that were set out in the un Unlock Henderson High Level Project Plan, which was endorsed by the Planning Committee on 2 May. Yeah, I'm happy to move with the addition. I think maybe Councillor Hope yeah, might have spoken to you. Coming. Of, it's not clear to me that that's financial yeah, contribution, and I want to really lock that down. You can't lock that down until Panuka come back to us, which they are going to in the next two months, about how we're going to deal with um, land of all the unlock categories, and we will then make a formal vote on that. Ala, we've done for I'm not only hunger and so, Sorry, I'm not clear what you're saying because that was the point of it. But I'm not saying particular numbers, but that there will be a financial contribution of some kind. I don't want to lock down that number because we don't know what that is. But that it's not just, oh, well, in kind, we'll help you plan something. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. But, I mean, if that's not possible, then we need to be told. But that wasn't clear to us in the planning meeting when this was all the, basically the same resolutions were passed at, um, at the planning committee. I thought that those were actually, that was implicit in the discussion and the presentation. So that's why I'm asking, Mr Chairman, if that could be clarified. I wasn't there for that, but Letitia, do you think it was implied or implicit in the presentation? Uh, through the Chair, my understanding is the uh, committee or the governing body still needs to make a decision about unlock locations and if the funds will be ring-fenced. I know that was certainly the intention uh, of the uh, Henderson Massey Local Board and I um, I think Panuku, that we'd like to see that happen, but a decision has to be made on the policy regarding unlock locations. Yeah. And that, that is coming with an initial paper within the next mm. couple of months, but it's certainly part of the LTP because when we're addressing full stop this whole issue of land sales and the difficulty we are going to have to meet those objectives. So, um, And I believe Panuku will be coming back with the recommendation that in within the unlock category, that a similar optimisation <coughs> policy be incorporated that has been done for Manukau and only hung up being transformed. So, yeah. Councillor Kirby. Well, yeah. well I, I suppose I just don't want this to get lost, Mr Chairman, if the intention's there I know from Panuku it was, and that's all the discussions that Councillor Hulse and I have had with the local ward and Panuku. Um, I don't want it to be losing out on a technicality because this town's actually dying if we don't do something. You know, it seriously is, and we're putting millions and millions of dollars into the Southern Initiative, yeah. Tamaki Transformation, um, and Saint. South Auckland, and quite rightly, quite rightly, Councillors from Manukau, absolutely. Mm. No, but what I'm saying is quite rightly we should be doing that because it's an area of high need. But West Auckland is starting to fall over because we're concentrating on that area and not on <coughs> basically the next most deprived area. And that's my biggest concern, Mr Chairman, for the community there. Um, so, you know, that's why I don't want it to, you know, on a technicality because that word is not there that we just go, oh, well. Well, I have to but say I'll leave it to your discretion. Yeah, it's not I'll really a technicality. I'll my I just say we just need to make a, the policy decision. But I, I can tell you now there'll be many councillors and local boards, many councillors here representing areas, other unlock areas that will all have the same objective as what um, yourself and Councillor Hulse are, mm. are trying to achieve with this wording. Um, and as I say, I think if I, you've seen Panuku nodding, they are going to come back to us with the recommendation that that's what we do for all of the unlock categories. So, Thank Councillor Hoss. Thank you. I'm just supporting Councillor Cooper. We are... Uh, this is a bit of belts and braces. I mean, I, I understand the targets 
that we've given to <coughs> Panuku to return via disposal. And, you know, full marks to the Henderson Massey Local Board who have grabbed the opportunity and have put up every last bit of land that they can possibly find for sale. Mm. Henderson Massey is walking lockstep with Panuku and we are, you know, Councillor Cooper and I, as the local councillors, are passionate to see Henderson get out of the ground. Councillor Cooper's not exaggerating when she says that without a strong cash injection to get this off the ground, this will not happen. And, that's a and we are. Centre. I have a fundamental concern about selling off land to simply get rates down. You know, we, we've made that political decision. It was not something I liked, but we're kind of stuck with it. But it seems to me bonkers to sell land and not return it to the local area, or some of it, a percentage of it, not all of it, but a percentage of it, to actually get this huge opportunity out of the ground. So, Mr Chair, we hear what you say, and I, 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 I know you are right, that this will come back to us to understand clearly how are we going to deal with the unlock category? But I'm very reluctant to let go of signalling the wording without the clear uptake on the other side. It's a little bit of I'm not going to let go and I want something to still hold on to. I won't use the expression in public, but I think you know what I'm saying. So there is... I'd like those words to stay in there. The intention is, is clear and I think we need to stick with it. We're happy that wording. So no I'll, I'll move that, that so, with that know. wording. Second, thank you. And just noting it's a but metropolitan I'm just centre. Ask, I'm just going to ask uh, Ms Tyndall just to, just to reiterate some of the things I've Sweet. been saying. Thank you, um, through the Chair. Uh, just to some of the points that are being raised this morning around disposal processes. Uh, we have, um, I initiated some discussion with Panuku uh, in no, uh, late April uh, with respect to this, because obviously when things have been coming to committee, we've been ending up in quite significant um, discussion. Um, as a result of that, we've agreement that we, are, we uh, have a meeting on the uh, 27th of June with Panuku Development Auckland and a number of stakeholders across the wider council family involving council staff, staff from Auckland Transport and also representatives to, uh, from local board services. <coughs> the, it's the, objective of that meeting is to establish a clear process that can feed into the LTP uh, on disposals, what needs <coughs> to be considered, by whom, by when, including what the parameters are of the financial requirements, uh, but then that can and include some of these unlocked collocations. Thank you. Councillor Darby. Thank you. Um, so yes, it was before planning committee and at no time until I at the end of the item, uh, when I commended Shane Henderson as chair for offering up $26 million worth of land, which was quite considerable, at no time other than in the written report was there any mention about uh, reinvestment in Henderson. Uh, it was mentioned in the written report because that was expressed by the board, um, but it wasn't conveyed orally at the time. Um, and I made the point that that would be subject to future decisions based on the report that you've instructed, Mr Chair, for this committee on the unlocked categories. So um, I, I want to probably reiterate some of the things I said in um, an acknowledgement of the board's extremely bold um, move to offer $26 million worth of land. Uh, clearly that board knows the desperation uh, that there is in wanting to see you know, Henderson reignited, rebooted pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and it's, it's pretty, it's huge for a board to come forward as it did and without caveats just say, look, we need to deliver at pace in this area for a whole range of reasons. And I, I want us all to reflect on the willingness of that board and it's all its members, I believe unanimously, yep. no dissent at all. Not hanging their, their hat on okay. some spurious argument, why not? Everything was why we want it. And uh, I really take my hat off to that board in particular and the local councillors working in tandem to get that forward. I'm a little bit concerned about 
the addition of including financially, but as I read those words, they do not infer that there will be a reinvestment of $26 million in full or in part. Yeah. That is still the subject of a future report that you've just confirmed is coming, Mr Chair. So I'm willing to uh, support it um, and continue to support the board, um, but there is no inference in the, in the reds there that a dollar is being um, transferred from the, the disposal amount, 26 million up to, uh, mm -hmm. back into the, the centre and the high level project plan that will still be subject, like all the other unlocks, are subject to the future decisions of this committee. Tasha Moran, can you just give us a timeline that, you know, if, that it will be progressing through these because I must admit an earlier presentation about Henderson that really was not a lot was going to happen initially. It was going to be quite take quite a while for the initial disposals for the initial interest, especially around the um, the old um, Waitakere Centre. Is that well into next year? And the reason I'm saying that is because we're going to have this discussion on unlock categories and land optimisation well before then, if that was the case. Is. Um, Chair, uh, in an attempt to answer that, my understanding is that the first key development move is around um, central, the Central One building, particularly the car parks there. So that, as I understand it, will um, happen in the, in the next uh, financial year, towards the end of the next financial year. Preparations, of course, will commence earlier than that in terms of making it happen. So, given the history there, because as, as Councillor Hulse and Cooper know, that uh, Waitakere actually tried for a long time to get other people interested in the land around that building anyway, and it's been six years of the Super City and we still haven't had anyone really popping up, so I don't think it's likely to happen immediately. Um, and I think we will have the reports back, the required report back on, on optimisation and, and um, and the unlock categories well before then. And, and let's face it, it has to be basically September, October, because it's, it's, um, it informs the LDP hugely. Yes. yes, through the Chair, just to confirm that, and we have every intention of getting those reports through to you shortly on the wider unlock uh, ring fencing of funds uh, or partial ring fencing of funds. And just to confirm, we just want to make sure that we've got our process correct, that there's actually a poli policy decision by this committee about if funds should be ring fenced in unlock locations before um, we make specific one-off decisions. So I do understand the concerns raised by both the ward councillors, but we're just trying to ensure correct process and policy is followed. All right. Well, Councillor Watson. Yeah, I'm, I'm just um, uh, taking that um, discussion a little wider, Mr Chair. I, I understand what's been said about the unlock categories here. I can recall in the time of the last Council when um, a resolution was passed with respect of disposal of uh, uh, <coughs> service property, um, there was some commentary to uh, the desirability of, of, of part or whole of those funds being uh, then return to local communities and that would be seen as a, a way of uh, perhaps encouraging local boards to be a little bit more forthcoming. Clearly uh, in the case of Henderson Massey they, they, they've advanced this uh, series of disposals on the, you know, the hope and I, and I think it will probably be a little stronger than hope that the returns are going to go to achieve their objectives in Henderson. But if we uh, take that out to the rest of Auckland in light of that previous resolution I referred to, um, I would hope that um, any, any policy or, or, or future discussions uh, is applied across Auckland as, as a whole then, as, and as originally signalled, because obviously while we've got unlock um, projects on the way, there are plenty of other areas of uh, deprivation, maybe not on that scale, um, who would similarly benefit from a similar view of these policy, of this, uh, of a, a policy whereby in part or whole was returned to that, that community. So, Councillor Watson, I, mean, I think you can be comforted, I think you'll notice from the, the uh, presentation of the local boards made a couple of weeks ago that we've got 
them to focus on coming back with one or two projects in, in each area. Now, a number of those local boards clearly coordinate with the transform and the unlock categories, and indeed, obviously, the support, which is the next level down. We are aware there are other boards and other areas that are not even in the support category. Mm -hmm. um, they are the next level down, and obviously, transform, unlock, and support has all been based around the spatial priorities, which the council has agreed, and also obviously coordinates with the unitary plan. So, for the long-term plan, one of the things that I think many of us would say, and I certainly I have briefed it to Mr. Kempton, is that we'd like to see what we can do. That pretty well every board gets something at some stage, even if it's starting projects or getting investigations, so that you're not just continually being dropped off because obviously those local board areas that aren't in any of the, you know, as I say, transform, unlock or support are going to get very weary and fight increasingly about disposing of land when they see everything goes into a consolidated pot and they're on the never-never as the project. So, so we hope for the annual plan that we can just try and deliver and, you know, the Mayor's more than aware we've got to find the money, but um, so it's all LTP. So. All right, so we have no one else. We've got to move in. Sorry, <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Oh, I was just quickly, I mean, I'm, I do absolutely hear what Councillor Watson's saying, but Councillor Hulse and I would not be supporting this if it was not a metropolitan centre identified in that tranche of nine um, town centres to either transform, unlock or support. I mean, we're very well aware of that, and I just want to back up the Henderson Massey Local Board that it wasn't their idea to say, oh, we'll get that money. It was actually in discussions, Panuku, with us over time. It wasn't a let's grab it because we can at all. And I know that they do not expect that there'd be 26 million coming back to them, not in any shape or form. They just want to see something happen and stop their town dying when it's actually a metropolitan centre, which you know, would be a pretty bad look for Auckland Council if one of our metropolitan centres is a ghost town. So, and I also think that when we did that um, prioritisation, Panuku did that, we did that with them two, at least two years ago now. We didn't even have the unitary plan completed. Things change, opportunities change. And I think we just have to be really nimble. And when you've got a local board that say, yep, get rid of our parking, which is unprecedented. And in my Takaru days, people lost their council roles for getting rid of, you know, wanting to pay $2 for car parts. People actually lost their jobs. So I think they're incredibly brave, you know, to do that. But also, we're a transport-oriented development, you know, and we were before our time at the time, but now we're lagging, and I think this will be a really good contribution to the form of our region and encouraging people to use public transport. So um, I just want to defend our local board. They're certainly not... Um, you know, being trying to be opportunistic in this. Yep. Thank you. Right, I'm going to put the resolution. All those in favour? Resolutions? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? None against. Thank you. Unanimous. Wonderful.